Hi everybody again, Tom Hoffman with another exciting tutorial on how to make a roller coaster in 3D Max. So this particular coaster is called the Devastator. It's one that I designed to kind of go with the theme of uh, buildings collapsing. It's definitely one that I want to uh, kind of showcase to you as an example of what you can do in 3DS Max. Uh, I have multiple camera angles. I'm using a pretty much a constraint system with a little bit of key framing that's going to keep that coaster on that track while it's moving. Uh, particularly, I tried to create the illusion that the, the coaster is going to come near the buildings and a little bit of sound in the background. Uh, obviously, this is a work in progress uh, using some motion blur and some Z depth to give the uh, depth of field illusions that uh, you are seeing here. Uh, in a moment here, I'll sh go ahead and open up the project and show you uh, what it looks like inside Max. But I did want to show you uh, my progress uh, thus far. This, uh, this particular project I've been working on for um, close to six months now and uh, obviously there's a lot of rendering involved. Uh, I opened up this version of Max here just to kind of give you a, um, a quick show. Uh, obviously there's a lot of geometry here and uh, when I do my animating I typically remove uh, a lot of the supports and the additional buildings. but. Um, for the most part you'll see that uh, using the techniques I've showed you in previous videos along with uh, some of the ones I'm going to share with you today uh, you can create a project uh, this immense which um, is a great portfolio piece but uh, also it represents uh, probably the most important thing in 3ds Max uh, and that is its architectural abilities uh, and, and some of the things you can't do with some of the other software programs um, so again uh, I hope you're in going to enjoy, uh, so far you've enjoyed my tutorials and uh, you can see where uh, where these tutorials can take you. Uh, but obviously what I'm going to do now is go ahead and move back into uh, the actual um, lesson. So this particular lesson is going to start showing you how to make uh, objects follow the track. Now, if we were working with a loft, uh, we'd have a little bit more success by using the surface constraints option. Fortunately, a loft doesn't give us the ability to create uh, the level of detail we want inside our track here. Uh, if we were just lofting the tubular track, yeah, that would probably work and the constraint system would be the best. Um, but as you, if you followed my previous tutorials, I showed you how to use the path to form method, which to me is going to get a more realistic track. However, it's going to pose a problem with the uh, perfection of animating. Uh, before we move on, I just want to show you, this is a section I'm working on here right now for the demonstration. I have two pieces. They're both, um, uh, right now, they're path deformed world space path deformed and if I hide those you're going to see that my uh, actual path is uh, hidden inside there and I definitely need that because I'm going to put a dummy on there to, to make this animate. Uh, however, uh, working with path to form is very difficult uh, especially like if, if you nudge something your track moves and uh, well we don't want that. Once we have our track set we want it to turn it into a mesh and unfortunately uh, no matter what you try to do, any kind of modifiers, if I try to attach these two together it won't let me do that because the path to form always overwrites what I'm trying to do. So what we're going to begin with is by doing a snapshot and again this is optional but I found it's very helpful. I'm going to go out with the uh, piece of track selected and uh, go to tools and do a snapshot. I'll do a single snapshot and I'm going to clone it as a mesh. What that's going to do is going to create a second piece. So now if I click, you'll see that I have the track that's the path to form. But then I click again, I have another version that's edible mesh. It completely wipes out the history of that path to form. That way I can actually mesh various pieces of track together. Now in conjunction, if you followed my previous lesson, you're going to want to edit spline all your pieces together. If you plan on doing one full-blown 
uh, scenario. But if you break it up and you're doing different camera angles and uh, you can afford to do that, uh, that's probably the easier way to refine your animation and uh, in post-production. So again, more than one way to skin a cat. Getting back to my lesson though, I'm going to do that again with this piece. I'm going to do a tools snapshot and hit OK. And you could delete the other piece, which is the uh, pat to form, or you can hide it and just use it maybe later. Uh, the one thing you have to keep in mind is n now if you deviate or you move the line path, your track will not update. Your track is now a solid piece. Uh, so again, advantages and disadvantages. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to attach to this other piece of track. So I have one piece of track now, but it still aligns with my actual path. Step two, I'm not sure if I covered this in previous videos, but I want to take my path and I definitely want to open up uh, the interpolation and kick that number up. Uh, I've got it maybe set at 30, I didn't go to 60. That's going to smoothen out your path, which is going to be evident when you're riding the roller coaster. Uh, the lower the steps, the choppier your dummy will be. Even though your, path, your, your track may be very smooth, your path ultimately is going to judge um, how the ride looks. All right, of course we do a save very often. Uh, to speed up here, I'm going to show you what I did. I created a uh, cylinder, a uh, chamfer cylinder, with a little bit of edit mesh. I kind of in indented the wheels so they wrap around the track. You'll want to do this in a spot where the track is flat, perhaps the station or even the first hill. Definitely don't try doing this right in the middle of a loop because you're not going to be able to orient your uh, wheels to match up uh, realistically. So we want it as straight as possible and then all you did was clone them. Now this tutorial is going to go over not, not necessarily the best method for this. Uh, I, I would suggest that if you're really serious about doing this, uh, go in and write yourself a Mac script that would constrain this. Unfortunately, regular constraint systems don't seem to work. They still um, no matter what, I, I've tried to break this down into splines and try to add multiple constraints and it seems like I always lose something in the mix. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of do it down and dirty. This is sort of like an introduction to, to uh, Max and, and the, and the uh, coaster process. But what I'm going to do is I'm pretty much going to make these wheels follow the track by the use of a dummy. And um, if you're not familiar with what a dummy is, it's a helper which can be found under Create helpers. And the dummy is pretty much going to be an invisible guide for me. Now I, I want to make the dummy kind of big and it, it's okay because you're not necessarily going to uh, see the dummy. So uh, it's not really worried. You can make it as big as the track but I wouldn't make it too big. And then what I'm going to temporarily hide my track and I'm going to take the dummy and under the animation constraints option, I'm going to do a path constraint. So I've got this dotted line, I now click on my path and the the dummy actually went to the other end of the path. What you'll see is it generated keyframes. Now these keyframes can be moved, I can switch them determining what's the starting and ending point of the animation. So by doing this, uh, it now brings the dummy to this end of the coaster track. Now if you were going from the other end, you just switch them. The other thing you want to consider is before you go any further that you want to try to time this out right. You have to look at the piece of track that you're working with here and determine how long on average would it take for this animation to transpire in order for this to move. Now, unfortunately we can't go in and just plug in numbers unless you go into doing some scripting but uh, you know if we do 70 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour, we're going to have to eyeball it. Uh, unfortunately that's just beyond the scope of my tutorials here. But what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and jump back here. I'm going to maximize this and I'm going to hit play and I'm going to try to just make sure that I'm about right. I think I timed it out by 200 frames will make my dummy go up and then down the hill. I can live with that. It's better if it's a little fast. Um, I apologize. It's better if it's a little slow because we can speed it up in post-production, but if it's too slow and we have to speed it up, we're going to be taking away from the quality by increasing the frames in post-production.
we don't want to do that. So when in doubt, render or I should say uh, go at a uh, you know a better frame rate so that you have more to work with here. So back to our tutorial here. I'm going to unhide all for a second here, and now what I'm going to do is I have all these wheels attached to each other right now. They're not going to spin. And the reason why is I don't think you're going to see them if they spin anyways. The coaster is going to be moving so fast that it's actually going to be pretty blurred. And uh, at the end of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do a blur effect, a blur pass, so that it actually kind of it, it helps us with the imperfections that we may have in our animation because the coaster is going to be moving pretty fast. So uh, you could take the time to you know maybe uh, link in some spinning wheels. But for this lesson, I don't think it's necessary. You paint these things black. People are more concerned about the coaster train and the people inside it. All right. Uh, so now that we have our object dummy following the path, we need to go over to the motion section and make sure we're under follow. That way it contours with the up and the down of the track. Now, it's not going to spin. It's not going to bank. And you may be real compelled to use this bank, and unfortunately, you're going to just beat yourself in the head using that. So, uh, allowing upside down sometimes helps if you're doing a lot of uh, 360 loops. For this lesson, I'm not. I'm doing a corkscrew type um, loop, so actually, I won't need it. So, you may or may not need to use that depending on what's going on. Next, I am going to link using the link tool, my wheels, to this dummy. So now when the dummy goes, you're going to see that the wheels do not follow, do not contour to the track, and unfortunately, we are locked there. Because again, no one constraint system works very well with path to form. Even though this has become a mesh, we still would have to break this down into splines, and there's a lot of work involved, and maybe a future tutorial I'll look at doing that. For now, we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. Walt Disney had to draw frames one, one at a time, or at least he had his team do it. So we're going to do something like that too. We're going to do a little bit of frame by frame animation. I'm going to go out and begin by putting a free camera in my right view. And I'm going to strategically place that camera uh, so that I can see. And we'll come out here and, and see what the camera sees. We want to strategically place it so that it's actually looking backwards. And I'm going to put my um, constraints here. There we go. And with this camera, I am going to position it right above the wheels, and so I can see the actual dummy. All right, and try to center it as best you can. We're going to use this as a guide. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to link the dummy or link the camera to the dummy. That way, it's always oriented. So no matter what the dummy does, the camera is going to show any imperfections in our dummy. Next, select the dummy. And up here where the reference coordinate system is, change the word view to local. And what that's going to do is, as we're looking through the camera view, we're going to be able to reorient the uh, dummy to match the track locally um, on its axis, which is the axis is going to change based on the path that we're following. If you used view, you would actually you could accidentally deviate in one more than one axis, and it'd be a mess. And we don't want to do that. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go out. Now that we can see what the what the uh, view sees, we're going to turn on auto key, and we're only going to animate the dummy because the wheels are going to be constrained to that. They're going to be linked to that dummy. We're going to probably jump. Uh, let's say um, maybe change your time configuration down to about 100 frames at a time. And I'm going to go every five frames. And then with my rotate, I'm going to select my gizmo. And I'm going to rotate that. And you may have to turn off your angle snap if that's giving you a hard time. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my camera back just ever so slightly. Maybe put a wider angle on it here. Uh, let's do a 20. Yeah, maybe 24. There we go. What that's going to allow me to do is while I'm animating with Auto Key on, 
I go out to frame 5. I can see the transform gizmo down here at the bottom. I may even want to lower that camera just ever so slightly. And I, I just I need to see the transform gizmo because that's what I'm going to be manipulating. All right, I think we're good. So I select the dummy. I go out to frame 5. And with my rotate tool, I can take the little steering wheel here and I can adjust it to line up at the track. Yes, this is a bit of a tedious process, uh, especially if you are um, doing an entire roller coaster. Uh, that could take some time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple for you. Again, they don't have to be perfect because your coaster is going to be moving so fast and we're going to use a little bit of blur to kind of make that um, you know, as a distraction. But this is kind of a, a you know, it's, it's almost like a traditional frame by frame animation where we have to uh, kind of match objects up. We do have a little bit of tweening in there. You know, we are going by five frames. If you have a lot of quick turns and twists, you may find yourself adding more keyframes in there. I've actually had some situations where I've had to do a frame by frame, uh, especially with uh, loops, because when you when your camera kind of goes uh, straight up in the air, it doesn't know what direction it's actually going in. So I actually had to go in and do a frame by frame. But a lot of your straightaways, you may not have to do this at all. You may find that the path, you know, for a straight piece of track does not need keyed. So again, that's up to you on how detailed you may, if you're working in a team, you may want to break this up into various components of the ride um, so that people are doing this and then you can always put it together in post-production and, and no one's going to know the difference. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to pause the video now, but you'll see that I'm, as I'm moving in the background I can see where I've been and how the track is contouring. And I'm going to pause the video and complete this and then I'll resume uh, in a moment. Okay, so I've just completed the uh, whole entire roller coaster here. As you can see, uh, I can scrub through here, and, and there's a little bit of deviation, but I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And I can turn off auto key and hit play, and of course I can see how it contours with the track. Now, to, to make it a little bit more exciting, we can actually go back to the beginning take the camera and now we can take the camera and rotate it around 180 degrees again I probably t turn that on and spin it 180 degrees and I'm gonna go ahead and move it back and depending on uh, where your view is going to be you could have it you know snug down here in the wheels or you might want it up you'll see that as we hit play you're getting a point of view that's pretty impressive. It may be off a little bit. In fact, it looks like my entire camera uh, may be just slightly crooked because all of my supports are off a little bit. So that's an easy fix. You know, uh, once you mount the roller coaster train onto this process, you can pretty much um, link a new camera to that. And uh, there we go. It looks like it should be a little better now. And as long as it's saying somewhat close, you're getting a, a, a pretty realistic look here. Now there's some other additional things we're going to do in the next video. I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, Z-Depth and how to create the depth of illusion um, you know so that like as you're riding the ride things in the distance are, are blurry and, and we could use this depth of field on the camera but that's going to kill your rendering time. Uh, doing a Z-Depth pass is going to be a much easier if you're working with a program such as After Effects. I'm also going to go into Motion Blur with you. Inside Motion Blur we can actually blur objects based on their speed and that's important for a realistic make the coaster look faster um, so you know look for that in the next video and um, if you have any questions feel free to contact me um, through uh, YouTube here and uh, just FYI in the future here I'll be migrating all of my videos to a new channel um, called uh, learning 3ds max and uh, you should be able to find that um, out on YouTube with all of my uh, 3ds max 2000